It's my joy and privilege to greet you this morning on behalf of the name that is above every other name, the name Jesus Christ himself. Hello and welcome to you again wherever you're listening from. Thank you for taking this time off to listen to us this morning as we would encourage each other through the precious word of God. For a short while we'd like to base our encouragement on the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter, and we're going to highlight a few verses. But before we get we get there, allow me to, just to give you a background to the story that we're going to uh, encourage ourselves with. The Bible tells us the book of Exodus is a record of the story of the children of Israel fleeing from from slavery and Egyptian domination to into a land that God had promised them, into a land that is flowing with the milk and honey, a land that is uh, uh, the perpetual freedom. Uh, the background to the story that the Israelites had grown into a formidable nation while they lived in Egypt, uh, and the Egyptians were too scared that this nation was uh, was increasing, the population was increasing rapidly, and one of these days they were going to outnumber the Egyptians, uh, and in so doing, then they might take over the land of Egypt and rule, uh, and you don't want a foreigner uh, rule your land so they basically came up with the idea of trying to subject these uh, Israelites into being slaves and giving them the menial tasks to do and keeping them at bay and not making them to rise in society so that they they, they are total control of this nation the Bible would uh, tell us that the children of Israel being a, a chosen nation by God cried out to God and God listened and hearkened to the cry and he raised Moses to take uh, to basically lead them out of slavery into a land of freedom into a land that was flowing with milk and honey the Bible will then tell us that uh, Moses had successfully taken the people led them all out uh, out of the clutches of the Egyptian army and, and through the mighty Red Sea and they came uh, in, into into the wilderness and now about to go into the promised land or into the land that God had said he would give to them. We pick up the story then in, in the book of uh, Numbers, the 13th chapter. Moses then brings the assembly together, the entire 12 tribes of Israel, and he tells them, choose one uh, of, of the leaders of, of your tribe, and we want to take 12 people, we want to send them into this land of Canaan. We want them to go there and, and basically uh, do a reconnaissance of the land. We want them to go and spy the layout of the land uh, to see if the city is fortified, if the towns are well protected, uh, if, if, if the soil is fertile, and if indeed it is a land that is flowing with milk and honey. The Bible tells us that uh, in, in the book of Numbers, the 12 people were chosen, uh, given their brief, and they were sent into Canaan's land uh, as spies. They went on there for months uh, from the length and breadth of, of Canaan. They went into every possible city, uh, right, through the, uh, right throughout the outskirts of the city, into the towns, uh, uh, basically immerse themselves in, as, as locals uh, and trying to see and to remember what they're seeing and make a report to bring back to, to Moses and Aaron. Months later, the Bible tells us uh, that they came back with the report. Uh, all of the people very excitedly probably got together because they were on the brink of crossing into a promised land. Uh, they were going away from, from slavery. They were getting away from hardship. And they were going to go and basically settle in this new land. They were going to raise family. They were going to own livestock. They were going to own, uh, uh, own property. And they were looking forward to the, this new chapter in their lives. Uh, this, this new chapter that, uh, uh, that was the beginning of freedom. This new chapter that was the beginning of a successful transition from slavery into freedom and they were all excited and as they got together the 12 spies that came in and they gave the report firstly the land was exactly what God had said it was it was a land that was flowing with milk and honey in fact they brought in fruit and the fruit was of, of such good quality that he took two people to carry this bunch of grapes and and bring it across into where the children of Israel was the Bible would aptly describe, or, or, or the, the spies would aptly tell us, uh, that the, there were beautiful trees. Uh, the place was indeed fertile, uh, and it was a beautiful land. Then the next concept or the next strategy was, what was the towns like? Was it fortified? What are the people are? And what was the same out of the 12 people? It was a land that was fortified. The towns were beautiful. Uh, the people that were living there, they were big. They were like giants. And, 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 and there's a description in scripture that says that, the, uh, that, that we looked or the Israelites looked like grasshoppers in front of them. But there were 12 people that looked at the, the, uh, this land and trying to see what they could and how they could take over and possess the land. Bible tells us two of them, Caleb and Joshua said to the crowd, listen, the land is beautiful. It is time that we went and took the land. 
the God is going to give us this land. It is ripe for the picking. Let us at once mobilize and let us go and cross. But the other ten stole the crowd and they said to them, they brought a bit of fear among them, said, no, it is impossible to do that. The people that we saw there are huge. In fact, we are like grasshoppers in front of them. We cannot take over the land. It is impossible for us. Their the, 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 the physical strength far outweighs ours. You must understand of all of these people, these guys were slaves in a land for for 430 years they were not trained in any army they were not trained in any uh end-to-end uh, -end combat they were not trained with trained with any swords or weaponry it was impossible for them to go and take over the land so you can understand their physical or their plight at this stage but i want you to understand the difference between 10 of the spies and the other two of the spies and the difference is this my friend you could either believe what you see or you could see what you believe. Ten of them believed what they saw. What did they see? They saw giants living in the land. They saw huge people. They saw people that they will not physically overcome. One on one, they will not be able to defeat them. They saw fortified towns and fear gripped their hearts. What did the other two see? Or oh, they saw exactly the same thing, but what is their, their motive in saying it is easy to go and take the land? It is easy for us to go and possess the land. My friend, the difference between those two and the other ten was this they believed what they saw they believed that God was going to give them the promised land because that's what he said he will do I have prepared a land for you I am going to give you the land there was absolutely nothing for them to do to go and possess the land they were not uh, needed to go and train the soldiers. They were not going to go every afternoon, take bow and arrows and start practicing. They were not going to sharpen the spears and, 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 and get ready for a uh, for a one-to-one -one armed combat. Whatever they were, uh, uh, th that was going to happen. God was in control. Uh, their mere presence in, in the land was going to be enough for God to do what he wanted them to do. Uh, History for them would have reminded them that under the leadership of Egypt, how easy it was when Moses or through God or God through Moses led them out of captivity. They were all there on, on, on the banks of the Red Sea when God parted the way for them and they crossed miraculously. All of them was there, but yet... Ten of them just believed what they saw. And the other two believed that this God was going to take them into the promised land. Today, my friend, you could be standing on the peripheral of your so-called freedom. Probably looking back, there's a lot of hardship that you are to endure. Looking back, you're coming out of a, a, a miserable relationship. Looking back, everything looks to be bleak for you. But there is a promise of, 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 of a good future for you. There's a promise of a preferred future for you. And you standing on the brink of, 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 uh, 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 of trying to cross into your land of freedom. But what is stopping you from going into the land? There's one of two things. You can believe what you see or you can see what you believe believe uh, maybe circumstances in front of you are so depressing and you don't want to even take the chance to go but my friend I want for you to know that there is a God uh, that loves you there is a God that cares for you there is a God that wants you to have the so-called freedom there is a God that wants you to have peace and joy uh, and my friend if you can only believe in him uh, he will take you into your promised land perhaps you going in the kitchen and you looking in and there's absolutely nothing in the cupboard, sir. You can believe what you see. You are seeing an empty cupboard. And there's nothing that you can do. But my friend, this morning I want to encourage you to see what you believe. What should you believe? Is this not the God that said, I am Jehovah Jara, your provider? Whilst the cupboards might be bare and empty, I want for you to know that Jesus, so God rather would never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible tells us if you can take care of the sparrows in the air, if you can take care of the of the, the flowers in the field, how much more valuable are you that he will not take care of you today? My friend, 
perhaps you're holding a report in your hand from the doctors uh, the third or the fourth opinion and tells you that you have very little time to live uh, the diagnosis and the prognosis is so bad coming from a professional uh, a medical opinion and there is nothing more that you can do uh, you can believe what you see and you seeing this report fr from a so-called renowned surgeon and there is absolutely nothing you can do you can believe what you see but this morning I want to encourage you to see what you believe uh, and what should you believe that Jesus says I am the Lord that he let thee I am Jehovah your healer divine and this morning I want to encourage you to, today to see what you believe and what should you believe that he is God Almighty the world might give you a report and you can believe exactly what you see but today I want to encourage you to see what you believe. The New Testament will give us a very good example of this. Uh, when Jesus rose from the grave and he showed himself to all the disciples or all the disciples had come to know. And then when the story was recounted to, uh, uh, to Thomas uh, and, and Thomas, Jesus had, uh, has risen like he promised. Uh, he was going to go into the grave. He was going to die on the cross uh, and he was going to come back again. And what was Thomas's remark uh, or what was his re uh, response? I'm not going to believe uh, except I see the nail print in his hand, I will not believe. And when Jesus appeared to, to Thomas, what was the response that Jesus gave to Thomas? And that's what I'd like to leave with you as we close. Thomas, blessed are those that have not seen, yet have believed. This morning, my friend, you can believe what you see, or you can see what you believe. I'd like to encourage you this morning to see what you believe. What should you believe? That he is your healer, that he is your provider, that he is your deliverer, and that he is Jehovah God. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Though you walk through the waters, you will not be drowned. Though you go through the flames, you will not be burned, because I am. Who I am. Let's pray. Father, we come to you through your son Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, we thank you for your graciousness, and we thank you for your mercy. And this morning, Lord, help us instead of believing what we see, that we see what we believe. Help us to see your goodness being manifested this morning. In spite of the sickness, help us to see healing. In spite of our lack, Help us to see your abundance. Help us to see your providence. In spite of the, of the fear that emanates in this world, help us to see your joy and your peace. Father, we thank you and we bless you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe there's somebody this morning that's listening to us that does not know who Jesus is. Jesus is your Savior. He's come, he died on the cross, he went to the grave, he rose from the grave, and he's coming back for you. The Bible says that he's going to prepare a place for those that believe in him. And there's only one way to get to where he's going to prepare this place, and that's called heaven, is if you believe in your heart. If you believe and confess that he is Lord and Savior, if you want to make heaven your home and you want to spend eternity where God is, you need to believe in him. And maybe you don't know who Jesus is. I want to introduce him to you as the savior of the world allow me to pray for you and maybe you can join me in this prayer father today i recognize that i'm a sinner thank you for saving my soul thank you for dying on the cross for me and today i believe in my heart and i confess with my mouth that you are christ the son of the living god in jesus name amen thank you and and god bless you